Hello everybody. Um, I'm picking up on the uh, lower pause tutorial that uh, we are doing as a collaboration together. Um, what a great idea. Um, uh, already a collaboration from Julia, Julia Kosrania and lower pause and very, very, very cool mandala that they made. Um, <clears throat> I'm just getting started on the second half. It's going to be my half. This half is the half that she designed, and these are my colors and with her design. And uh, now I pick up halfway. So I've gone exactly halfway to uh, the end. So now I pick up this part. All right. So... What I chose to do, what ha what I'm doing, I really don't have a plan for uh, what I'm going to do here. But what I'm doing, uh, the first stage is what I call it, <clears throat> will be a set of hexagons. And I'm going to skip over this stick. I'm going to go under it. And I'm going to start, I'm using white. Um, this part will be a dark color. You'll see. So we're going to make a hexagons, and I'm doing that right now. Okay, so I'm using very heavy sticks, so I'm going to be setting it down on the table a lot. Make sure I'm in the camera. Anyway, there we go. Making hexagons. So we go on all these all six points, every other uh, point. Okay. I'm trying to hold this and keep it from going on the table because. I realize it's probably really loud uh, on camera. I might put a towel down. That might help. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm making a hexagons. Okay. And I'm going to do it two laps with this color. Okay. So let's do that right now. Yeah, this, this one's too heavy to spin around like this. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm holding it a different way and just wrapping it underneath like that without turning the whole mandala. Um, so I'm just going all the way around twice with this particular, whoops. I must have double knotted this. So, let's go around twice. See, so yeah, it's really hard for me to twist it around like that. But it's such a big habit of mine that I did it anyway. But yeah, it's a little easier for me to just wrap it like that. So I think I'm not going to be using these metal rods in the future. Um, maybe if I can find some that are a little lighter. But um, I thought that this size would be just right to keep it from bending. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need something a little thinner and it'll still be just as sturdy, I hope. Okay. Okay. We've gone around twice. And what that means is that we stop because I'm going to I'm going to do it the the other points now. 
and we're going to go back and forth uh, every two laps of, of each hexagon. We're working with two hexagons, two six-pointed hexagons equaling all 12 points. So, um, and we're just going to make a little belt that goes around and then after that we're going to fill in that with a certain stitch that you will see later. So okay we've got that much and I'm straightening these to make them where I want them. They look pretty good. They look pretty straight to me. So now moving on uh, starting with the darkest color of the a different color scheme but I'm going to start with the darkest of it. Um, I'm doing that to create a contrast. And my other color scheme I chose was purple. Right now I'm doing blue and purple. Okay, This will be the blue that we just did. And now I'm doing the purple. Okay, And I'm starting with the darkest color, which would be this one right here. It doesn't look purple on my camera. It looks blue. But it is very purple. So, uh, let me get one that's accessible here. Okay, so now just picking up where we were before, but starting on the other the other set of points. Okay, so right here to here to here to here to here. Okay. We're going to go around twice, and then we're going to switch. So, and forgive me if I go off camera for a second. Um, hopefully the things that I do off camera are uh, easily figured out. Uh, usually... I'm trying to make sure all the really important things are on camera for sure. So, Okay, so I'm just making... I'm going to take that out. It was in my way when I was wrapping. Sometimes these uh, little wraps that I have, they get in my way. They make it so when I set the yarn right here, it doesn't go right where I want to put it. I wanted to put it right on the tip. Okay, so... Cutting that, making it a little shorter, just so it's easier to get the yarn around it, so it doesn't get tangled up in itself. Because, yeah, this stuff right here gets really long. Uh, you want to leave a little bit, because you want to wrap around it a little bit. We're not wrapping there, but anyway, I cut it. So, just keep wrapping around, and we're going to go twice, making a hexagon. Uh, opposing the other hexagon that we've already done in white. So we're almost done going around once and then just go around one more time and then we're going to stop there with this color. It's really hard to see it because of my background but there's a purple, you see it there. So that's, a, that's what we're doing. You'll see a little better now when I go around a second time. Uh, always going in the back of everything. We're not going in the front. Always in the back for this particular design we're doing. It calls for being in the back. So not here, but back here. Sorry about all the noise. I'm sure it's pretty noisy on this table. OK. 
Okay, almost done. So heavy. <laughs> okay, so now we've gone around twice. And we have two sets of hexagons. And now we're just going to keep filling those in until we get uh, the whole hue ombre gradation completed. And once we have that all done, Then we start doing the second part. Okay, so that's all I've done so far. And now we repeat doing the white, and then we uh, I'm starting with this blue color. It's a very bright blue. And we're going to be going around twice, so I need to get that much yarn out. I guess that would be enough right there. Okay. <clears throat> so, again, starting on... Starting on the uh, white, because we're doing the blue again. Um, I've got a bright blue here. A little darker than the white. And then there you go. Okay. I'm going to go under the last design we're doing. Okay, now go around once more. Yeah, I don't like the weight of these rods. They are so heavy. Um, I did not anticipate that. Um, I thought they'd be a little lighter, uh, but they aren't. It makes it very difficult, but um, it, I don't want to stop and start over with, uh, I was going to with uh, wooden sticks, and I actually attempted it, but I decided to keep going with this one just because um, I just didn't want to give up on it. Um, but yeah, I'm really regretting using this weight of uh, rods. They're just too heavy and uh, too hard to hold while I'm trying to get the yarn right where I want to put it. And it makes it a little more difficult, which is slowing me down a little bit, but we're getting there. And uh, we'll get through it together. I just apologize for all the scrape, like all these weird noises on this table. I didn't anticipate that either. Uh, maybe while I'm doing 
while I'm finishing up parts of this, I will go get a towel and it'll calm down the noise. Uh, and it'll also make the background a little easier for things to be seen. So I always forget black isn't the best background unless you're trying to display what you're doing. So there you go. Um, uh, it's hard to see. Like I said, this background isn't very good right now. But we're going to keep going and doing this. Um, and then we're going to fill it in with a different design. You'll see what I mean when I what I what I mean by fill it in when we get there. So now I'm just tying this off because I'm going to start in my uh, transitioning my designs, going back and forth, doing this design, then doing this design. So and that's all you do until you get all the way to the end of the colors that you're using. And in this case, I used the same amount. You know, uh, there's going to be six here, and there's going to be six here. So they will all meet up at the same point. Um, and that's what I want. Um, that's an important thing to, to uh, note when you... Woo. See, like it just wants to, it's so heavy, it just wants to do that. It's, so it's very, it's, I can't explain how heavy it is, but it's really heavy. Um, next we do the purple again. I'm using this color now, a little lighter than the last one. See? Okay, and then we go all the way until we just keep doing this until we get to the end and I'm gonna do this one right here and then I'm gonna skip to the next part uh, with the camera but you guys will understand how to finish this because I will show the end result uh, so yeah just uh, Keep doing what you're doing, going under each stick, skipping over each, every other stick, just staying, you know, obviously we're working with the purple design right now, so now you can just kind of follow the colors. They let you, they're your guide as to where you want to go next. So that helps. Sometimes that helps. Just having the colors to let you know where to go next. Um, so yeah, and you'll notice when you do this that, that there's going to be a little gap, right? It might be, it's hard to point even. There's going to be a little gap because this yarn is pushing that purple string down. That little gap will go away when you do this side next. It'll push this yarn up a little bit right here and right uh, here. So don't worry about those little gaps. I mean, I'm very, very, very particular about things, and when I see stuff like that, I'm like, huh, there's a gap there. But uh, you, that's normal. It'll go away uh, as you layer the lines. Um, they push against each other, and they will get rid of those little gaps that are made. So that's just something to note. You don't want to get stuck on that, is what I'm saying. You want to keep going, because nothing's wrong. So um, I've only gone around once, so I'm going to go around one more time. One more time. So heavy. Really awkward to hold still, so I can get it to, you know, just to meet up with the points. They keep spinning around on me. So We're okay though. Just a little noisy and a little awkward, but it, it'll, it'll be okay. So, but that's all we're doing right now is we're just putting these hexagons on 
transitioning every two ra uh, every two rounds, every two revolutions. And uh, we do this about six different times. So when that happens, we change the design, or we uh, do the next part once we get this part done. Okay, so there you go. That's that's how you do that part. Okay, so it doesn't look like much right now. It's getting there, though. And then once we get this design all the way to the end, then we start doing the next part. Okay, so get that part ready. And then we're doing the next part next. So I'll be back with that part all finished, and then we can move on, okay? <clears throat> okay, and I'm back. And I, as you can see, I just added more uh, revolutions of each hexagon. Um, I did, uh, let's see, I did uh five how many do i do here one two three okay i'm sorry yeah six <laughs> six on each so i did six different colors on each different for uh, for the blue i did six for the pink i did six so now i'm going to do something a little different um it's going to involve a needle and some black <clears throat> i'm using black and I have a pretty long piece. It doesn't have to be too long. I would say the length of your arms stretched out and maybe another half of that length. Okay? So we're just going to start and we're going to go around each point. And we're gonna, I'm going to start here. And I got myself a white background for this because we're working with black right now also. So... This way we can see it, but um, um, I, I hope I get all the critical parts in the camera. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. So here's what I got so far, okay? And here's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to put the needle right through this hole, okay? Right where the yarn meets up. Okay, from here to here, right there at that point. That's where I want to make my little, uh, that's where I'm going to make my, what do you call it, my stitch. I don't know. But here you go. So I want it to fall right there. Okay, that's what I meant. I meant right where, you can barely see it, there's white, that's white. There you go, right there. I'm going to put it right where those two meet up. Okay, that's where my point is of intersection. And, and I'm trying to make that line that it makes. I want it to be pretty straight, going straight. Wait, wait, these, forgive me, these sticks are very heavy. Straight down. So between... This stick and this stick, wherever this falls, it may not be in the middle, that's okay. But you want it to be straight down, not pointing this way or this way. You want it to be straight down. Okay. And then moving on, we just wrap this yarn around. And then go to the next one. This time we're going to start from the back. And go through this hole and do the same thing but we're just instead of going from the front we're starting from the back okay I'm having issues with my the arms on my chair here it's getting all my yarn tangled up in it But what we're going to do is we're going to go around each of these points, okay? 
and we're going to put the little things between the little areas right there. I'm just re-threading my needle and I, my, the arms on my chair are grabbing my yarn. <laughs> They're, uh, it's having a mind of its own and pulling on it. Okay, but we're going to start from the back, like I said. From the back, through here. Okay, and then through there, through that loop that it made. Like we've been doing on all of our stitches throughout this whole process. We're just, basically we're just grabbing the yarn in different places, doing the same, the same type of technique. Uh, this little loop that we're making, the little knot we're making, it's synonymous throughout the whole project. So, okay. So I'm just making these. And that's all. And going to the next one. Okay, this time we're going to do the opposite of what we did on this one. We went from the back on this one, so this time we go to the front. So it's back, front, back, front. And it's pretty much, it's pretty much like that always. So yeah, this chair is really bad, so I'm going to get a different chair. So bear with me for just a second, but I'm, I'm grabbing it right where I did last time. And as you can see, these sections right here turned out smaller than these sections, and that's okay. Uh, usually I want to get these to be exactly the same. Um, they didn't turn out that way. Um, that's because the pink sections are in the back, and there was more depth to get there and I needed to have those bigger to start with in order to have them to be equal to these. They had to be out further to start with from this design. But everything's okay. And so, forgive me, let me just grab another chair. <clears throat> this chair doesn't have arms on it. So that's another thing. The type of chair you're using can get in your way. Avoid a chair with arms. Okay. So, same thing, just going around. Just going around right there. Sorry if I go off camera sometimes. It's unintentional. It's because it's so heavy that I'm having a hard time holding it in the camera as I maneuver it. Um, this time, we went from the front right on this one so now again we're going from the back okay back to the front and then through the loop that it makes okay and then I'm doing it right where they meet up again okay each time where that line meets up with that line right there in the middle. Okay. Just using my finger to straighten it out, make it where I kind of want it. So that's how they look. Okay. We're going to do that around the whole thing. Okay. I'll do one more and then I'm going to skip to the next part. It's a lot easier for me to, once you guys get the idea of what I'm doing, it's easier for me to <laughs> take this heavy, this heavy mandala and just do it off camera. But for, uh, for now, it's fine. So we went, I forgot where I was with going forward and through the back. That's okay, but you have to start from here. And I remember I went from the beginning forward. So this was forward, back, 
forward, back, and so now again forward. So I start from the front and go through. It's kind of important. Um, if you make a mistake on that, it's hard to notice unless you're really up close to it and if you are really looking at the stitching. Um, but it does matter. It makes it look a little more uh, symmetrical up close. So that's something to think of. So there you go. I'm going to go around here and do this all the way. I'm going to go all the way around once with this. It's black, okay? And we'll be right back, and then we'll continue. Okay, I'm back. And there's the result of the black. So it's just kind of, you know, uh, it enunciates the uh, pink points and the, and the blue points. More of the pink points, though, if you see it. Um, the pink points seem to stand out more, and the reason that is is because uh, they are brighter tones against that black, and these blue tones are a little darker. Most of them, it's dominantly darker. And what that does is it kind of draws the, the black away from your eye. Um, so there you go, and I did that on purpose. Uh, so basically... I used black because I knew that would happen because I knew this was very bright and I wanted it to stand out more. Um, when it's just white at the end, it's hard for you to see it, um, especially when you have it against a white wall or in this case, this white background. So there's a little bit of a color thing there, a little lesson in color or color theory. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, that's just, I don't have education in it. It's just my feelings on it. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we're going to do a stars, okay? And we're going to start with pink. And I'm going to start right here now, all right? And I'm going to start doing stars. But I'm going to start with the bright white because I've ended in, let's see, I ended in dark. So I'm going to start with the brightest of the pink, okay, against right here. Um, and I'm going to start with the blue points and I'm going to do a, do triangles. Okay, I'm going to go from here to here and from there and from there. Okay, I'm going to make triangles. And that's what we're going to be doing right now is a bunch of triangles. So let's start. And, uh, Yep. Just um, pick a spot. Make sure you're on the blue. Okay. And uh, we begin. This doesn't require a yarn needle. We're just doing basic, uh, basic triangles right now. Um, and we're going to go from there to there, skipping one, two, three, going to the fourth one making a triangle. I'm going around these sticks whoop. I'm going to go around these sticks twice. One, two. Okay. And uh, we just, I want to get, I'm going to go around twice. We're just trying to make little points there. It doesn't look like much right now. One, two, three. Fourth stick. One, and then another time, two. Okay, and then meet up with where you started. So, in the back, triangle. Okay, simple enough. And then we do them right here. We do, we're going to go around twice with this, okay? And then I'm going to start on these points from here to here to here. Okay. And we're going to make a, we're making a hexagonal star. So that's what we're doing. Okay. So I'm going around one more time and I'm going around twice, once, twice. Okay. And going to the next point. Undoing all this. Getting it out of the way for the most part. 
that's fine how it is. And then going here. Going around twice. Once. Twice. Okay. And then same thing here. Go around the point twice. And then we're going to the, where we started. And then we will tie it off. And then we'll examine it in the back and see what we've done. And from the front. Forgive my pace. Um, I'm very slow because, yeah, these are really heavy. All right, we're wrapping it, tying it off. Okay. Okay. From the front, you see the white. Right here, here, and here. And now we're going to do stars right here, here, and here. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, triangles. Uh, another, same thing right here, but uh, right here. And we're going to form a hexagonal star. So get some more white. Get as much as you need to make make it around twice, making the triangle. Okay, and then starting right here. All right. And going every one, two, three, fourth stick. And then wrapping around twice. There you go. And then going here. Wrap around twice. Now I'm at the beginning. Okay, and now go around one more time. Wrapping around twice each time you go around the sticks. I'm going to undo that. Ooh, I keep hitting the camera with my project. Okay, and then going from the, to where you started. And then you're done with that the white uh, star that we've just made. You're done with the first color. Tie it off. And then we will examine this. What did we do? Hard to see it with that background. There you go. So we've done on the blue points only. We've started the design. I'm going to move those over a little bit. I don't want them to be so bubbly. 
I want them to be nice and triangular because when you start adding the lines, that's going to push all your lines out farther than you may want them to look. It'll just make it look bubbly. That's okay. But if you want your lines to look sharp and your designs to look very sharp and uh, what's the word? can't think of the word, but <laughs> anyway, you want it to look as symmetrical as possible on each of these points. And to do that, to get them like that also, making your lines parallel, very it helps a lot. Okay, so we've done that. And so now we're going to start making the star on the pink points, and we're going to do blue, okay, along these points now on the, on the pink. So I chose the dark, let's see, We the last color we did was, <clears throat> was white for the pink spectrum. So we're going to do a dark blue to start, okay? And uh, we're going to make triangles from here to here to here to here, and then the same right here. We're going to just do... We're going to go around twice, just like we did like this, okay? So I'm going to do that. Okay, so now we're going to start making the blue triangles, starting with the darkest blue. Oh boy. There we go. Okay. Getting enough to go around twice. Okay. So I'm gonna start right here. And then I'm going to just do the same thing I did with the white. Okay, but now we're just doing it with the blue. Um, I'm just doing it along the pink points now. So basically where it's going to be pink, blue, and blue and pink. Okay. I'll take that out. And then put that on there. And then I'm going to go around twice again and then make these star, these, uh, keep calling it stars, triangles. We're making stars, but we're making triangles first. Okay. Okay. Heavy. <laughs> okay. You know, I've gone around once already. Doesn't seem like it, but I made it already. And I'll just go around one more time. Complete another triangle. And then once we do that, we go back to the pink that we're working on. Well, I mean, once we get this completely done, we have another triangle to make. So I'm getting ahead of myself here. But, um, it's all, you always transition what you're doing. You don't keep doing the same design. Um, in this case, it's better to transition for what I'm trying to achieve. So here we go. There's one triangle completed. Tying it off. Just tying it off right at the end because I've gone around twice. 
and then I'm going to do the other blue triangle. Then we switch back to what we were doing before. In the back. Okay. And you can see it. It needs a little straightening. That's fine. Get it. Whoop. Get it straight. There. Good enough. Okay. Now make the other one. Okay, now we're making the next triangle with the blue. On the other set of pink lines, of pink points. Okay, so same thing, making triangles. See where I'm doing? That's what I'm doing right there. Go around twice. Yeah, just making sure I'm going around twice. And then go here. Now, Go to the beginning and then go around one more time. and then back to the beginning and then tying off right there so there you go you've got these little tiny little points that you can hardly see <laughs> along the whole perimeter that they will start to fill in so that's what we're going to do around the whole thing and uh I and tie this off, and then I'll explain how to do that. We're just basically repeating every all the four steps that we did. We did four different triangles, okay? We're going to repeat in the same order. So here's what we've done. So what we want to do is now we're going here again. Make sure you pick the one you did that's on the very bottom. That would be this one. Okay, because it's the one you did first. Then you did this one. So now we want to go back to the first one that we did. So we're going to start on this set of points and we're going to make another triangle right there. And then we're going to go and do it the pink on this set right here. Okay. And then we're going to switch to the blue. And we'll start with the one we did first, which is this one. This one's above it. This one's below. So we do this one first. And do the next blue. And then we're going to do this one. Okay? Repeat all the steps that we just did until we get a pretty large triangle going to about, I would say, right where my finger is. It may only go to maybe here right now, but we'll figure that out when that time comes. So now make your triangles and start. So we just did the blue, so now we go back to the pink, okay? And do your pink triangles, then do two lines of those, and then do two lines of the blue. And just keep doing that. Okay, I just wanted to show that I did the pink. Now I'm going to do the blue. Okay, and on from the front, there's just another, 
that's what that looks like white and then pink and then this one's blue so I did white and then I did blue and then I did pink and now I'm doing the next blue and then I'm gonna do the pink. you see how that works going back and forth making sure we do both triangles of the same color at the same time and then switching to the next color and then keep going back and forth back and forth until we it grows to about uh, about here um, on all the points and then we'll have an intersection and then we're gonna work off that where they meet up right here we would do it now but they're just very wide we're gonna we're gonna make these angles a little uh, they're gonna be a little uh, more acute of an angle and that'll make this design a little better looking so um, so now I'm gonna do the blue okay and I'm a little bit lighter I'm gonna do it right here and I'm gonna do the blue triangles okay and then we'll be back okay so now we just did dark blue a little bit lighter blue white and then the light pink okay and it went in this order it went I did white first and then I did the dark blue and then I did the pink and then I did the next light blue okay and we're gonna continue that okay and here's what it looks like on the front we're gonna continue doing that oh, there we go we're gonna continue doing that for another until we get to about I would say right here right about there anyway what you'll see we're gonna go I do the same amount of colors okay so it's gonna go out a certain amount it's gonna be a little longer than this right here because I only went I only wrapped once along these and I wrapped twice on these so the distance is actually gonna be a little longer which is good that's fine we want these to peek out pretty far and uh, we're using this one two three four five six colors okay so however many how six colors however long that'll be okay so just finish with your colors that you picked for each of these and do these these now and do them in the order that I explained and then we'll be back and we'll continue to work on the next part after we uh, finish that so I'm gonna finish that now and then we'll be back okay and so we've completed the stars and that's how they look and on the back um, they're woven together um, yeah so again we let's see I'm just straightening things um, we started with the pink triangles and we did the white okay and then we moved to the blue the blue and we did the darkest blue on this triangle and then on this one as well the darkest blue and then we moved to the uh, pink and we did the bright pink color right here it's hard to see it almost looks like the white it's very close to it right there okay and then we did those and then we did the blue and we did the pink and we did the blue pink and then blue pink blue and this is what we ended up with this is the back though um, this, is what, this is what we got now what I wanted to do was go a little bit further because I want um, a little bit of the middle where these two tri uh, where these um, start where these points right here these two points meet up with each other right here in the middle I want this area right here to be a little higher like I want it to be like right about here maybe so I need to add that much more colors to each um, section to each point uh, more triangles 
Um, I'm not going to go too much further. I, I predicted another maybe two, like one, uh, two line, two wraps on this on each point. So another two lines on each point. Um, that should bring it out to where I want it. And if not, then we'll just go a little further. Um, like I said, I want it to go about maybe to about here. From from right here, I want it to extend out to about here. And then we're going to move on to the next thing. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then I just wanted to show you guys the result of all six colors that I used for each, the blue and the pink, and what it looks like when I'm done with that. And so I hope everyone's following. Um, and um, I'm going to put the black on. I'm going to put, I think I'm putting uh, one triangle. I'm going to put black on to outline these just once around. Okay. And then I'm going to decide what colors to, to bring it out to about here with. Um, you know, like I said, I only need to do one color. So it'll probably be, probably be a color that I've used uh, that I've used through the whole thing so far, but um, something that will show up very well uh, with both of these colors, and I believe that would be yellow. I think because it's the only bright color. It's got to be a green, um, and I'm going to outline it. But first, I'm going to do black, okay, and then yellow will come after that. But I'm going to do black, and we're going to I'm going to do triangles. This will go in the back, and I'm going to outline them in black. And I'm going to do both. I'm going to do the pink also in black. Just one line, and uh, in the back, but not in the front. I just was showing you where I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do that right now. And we'll, I'll record part of this so we can, you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Um, so I'm going to pick, let's see, the one I did... So you want to start in the purple because we did the the blue last. So I want to pick the one we didn't do last. So it'll be purple, and I want to pick the one we did first of the purple, and it would be this one. This one, this is under this right here. So we want to start on this point. I'm starting on this purple point right here. And yeah, I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing, except I'm only going around once, and I'm making a star, uh, a triangle, and turn it into a hexagonal star. So two triangles on the pink, two triangles on the blue. And we're only going around once with this black. We're just outlining. That's all I'm doing with this black. Just making a little outline. And I've figured out a way to... To do this, so I'm on camera. So it's very heavy, and I can barely pick it up now. It's gotten a lot longer. So, um, okay. trying to get this all on camera and it's difficult because of the cumbersome of this. Um, so I'm just making a triangle like I have been, but I'm doing black. And I'm only going around once. I'm already back to the beginning. So I'm done with that. Done with that section. In fact, no, that's what I'll do. I'll just do it once. I was thinking maybe I should go twice because it's barely showing up, but I don't want to do any more than that, actually. I just wanted to do it once. That's okay that it's barely showing up, partly because it's against a very dark color to start with. Uh, when I do it on the white star, you'll see it a lot, and that's kind of what I want. I want the blue star now to be um, a little more easy to see. Right here, you were able to see the pink a little easier because this black line against the white. So it stands out slightly more in your eye. Um, okay, so now we've just done that one 
that one line and this one wants to pull in right here so I'm just kind of pulling it out a little it's okay though and if it if it if it just doesn't want to and it wants to stay like that just let it stay like that um, you know but try your best to get all your strings to lay where they want to lay where they should lay I should say uh, but you know sometimes you are defeated by your own yarn so um, so here we go doing the next triangle still doing the pink I know it's hard to see this because it's black and I'm on a black table here but this is a minor detail and I'm sure we if you've already done the triangles you know how to do these so you're not missing anything but I will show you the end result and make sure you're able to see it so sorry I'm just wrapping around twice around these points trying to keep it in view of the camera I apologize that I don't keep it in the, the camera the whole time. Um, okay. So that's, that's done. I'm done with the pink for the, well, I mean, just for that lot, for that black line. Uh -huh. And now we move, well, first I want to look at it, make sure they're all, see this one really is kind of too far. I would just want to, I can move it over and it'll stay there for the time being. Let's see if it, now once I lay string over that, it'll lock it into place. So, so let's hope that it stays right where I want it for the time. Okay, now. Two triangles on the blue. Pretty easy stuff. Oh, make sure you pick the right, make sure you pick the right one every time um, when you do these. It, it helps, keeps things consistent. Um, so I'm picking. Let's see. Okay, this white line is underneath this white line. So we're doing this one first. So this 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 triangle set of points right here that I've got my hand on. So that's where we'll start with the blue. Put one strand of black going around. You can pick any colors you you want. I'm just trying to outline, and uh, and I'm explaining why I'm doing that. Part of the reason why my yarn is going um, is getting too tight and pulling inward is because some of my yarn is elastic. And it has a, a lot of elasticity. And you actually do not want yarn that has a lot of elasticity. Uh, when you go to pull it, in order to pull it tight, you have to actually pull it a little tighter than it than, than just quote unquote taut. And it creates a lot more tension, I notice. And then the elastic, it just doesn't help. Um, so it helps to get yarn that is, uh, I would assume that that's more of an acrylic feature. I think acrylics are, uh, very elastic-y, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't quote me. But, um, I prefer yarn that is really stiff when you pull on it. It doesn't have any elasticity. That's the kind of yarn I like a lot. Okay, so uh, I hope I got that in camera. If I didn't, what I, all I did was put a black triangle on the blue. And we're going to flip it, and I'll show you what I did. I put it right here. Okay. One black triangle. And now we're going to do the other one right here, okay? And then we're done for the moment with the star until I decide what I want to do next because 
these things kind of uh, present themselves as you get there. Sometimes I have a plan and sometimes that plan works perfectly. And then sometimes my plans are either interrupted by the design or I just simply change my mind. So, and I change my mind a lot. But I'm trying not to do that for a tutorial. I'm trying to make it straightforward for everybody. So I won't be changing my mind too much here. Um, but yeah, whatever I end up doing on camera is the final, it will be the final solution. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So I'm going around once and I'm done. So now I'm just tying off. Okay. I got a big mess of other colors underneath all that that I tied off on. That's okay. Let it go. In fact, you know, on these small metal rods, they like I was saying earlier, they, they slide around. Now, if you have all this yarn wrapped and you just start wrapping around over this yarn, it'll, it, it takes care of that problem. So actually having all this yarn mess is actually a good thing. <laughs> you got to use it to your advantage. Um, I kind of just realized that today, uh, working on these metal rods, I was like, you know what, actually, this, all this yarn mess that I have, like all this stuff, is actually helping. It's actually helping the yarn grip, and that's good. So, okay, that's what I've done. Just an outline. Okay. And it doesn't look very different on the front, especially in this background that I have here. It does not look very different at all. Eh, it's hard to see, but anyway, there's a little bit of outlines going on now. Still hard to see. You get the idea. Okay, and then I'm going to be back with more when I figure out what I'm going to do next. Okay, so we decided to go a little further, making these a little longer. Um, uh, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then with the black it's 11. So 11 different colors on each of these that I chose. Um, uh, both 11 colors using two laps each color, okay? Which is a total of 22 laps. That's what I did. Um, I went pretty far. I wanted to make this, the star petals long. They were too short. Um, now we're going to connect it with black, okay? So the black is going to go... Let me see. Let me get the camera over here. So because I'm working off the edge. This is really heavy now, so I'm working off the edge. And now we can put this together. I've got a piece of black yarn, and I'm going to start right here. And I'm just going to wrap around the whole perimeter. Whoa, see that came out. Okay, just wrap around the whole perimeter with this black yarn. Um, I'm going to wrap around twice. One, two. Okay. Secure these, make them really tight. Um, because we're going to be one, two. Uh, we're going to be wrapping yarn and pulling it this way. And I want those to be nice and locked in position. One, two. Okay. One, two. All the way around. Make sure you go twice around because it's kind of important to keep this yarn from slipping. One, two.
two. Okay. Back to the beginning. One. Let's just wrap that real good with the black secured as well. Making sure you you grab that and wrapping over it. We're gonna wrap. We're um, tying off. We just want one uh, strand of this black. And something that you should note: make sure your yarn is very strong when you're doing this procedure. Make sure that the yarn you're using, when you pull it apart, it doesn't rip apart in two. Uh, you want a piece of yarn that's strong and that will hold a lot of tension for a long time. Because I have some yarn that does fall apart when I just pull it apart real hard. And I don't like that. But most of my yarn doesn't do that. But just I always test my yarn, especially when I'm doing these, uh, because that's why. I want to make sure that these don't break ever. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to do the next lesson, which is going to be this yellow yarn. Okay, I'm going to make, we're going to do green sections, and we're going to be pulling them inward on all of these. And it's going to go in the back, and they're going to all meet up. Okay? So this string is going to go and meet with all of these points without having to change colors once. Okay? Um, so we'll get to that in the next lesson. Okay? So we're going to find any of these points, any of the middles. We're going to start on this one right here. Got your yarn, your short end, your long end, okay? Put your short end on the left, put your long end on the right. Hold your yarn, make a loop, okay? Take that loop, put it under, not over, put it under this, and then take what you have and put it through that loop, okay? on the other end. So take both parts. One's going to be the short end and the other's going to be the long one. You want to pull, hold it and pull the long one through that loop. The other one that's short, just hold it in your hand. That's what you're going to make. You see that? That right there is what you want. Let me see if you can see that. Let me hold that up for the camera. That's what we that's what we're gonna do throughout the whole thing, okay? That's what it looks like. And I just wanted to do a close-up of that right now because some of these parts I'm gonna do are gonna be off camera because by mistake, by accident, and I don't want you guys to not understand how that looks. Now I'm gonna pull that tight and watch what happens, just pulling it like that, okay? Right in the middle, find the middle, find the middle of this, that would be the middle right there, and I pulled it tight, okay? Let me see if I can hold that up without bending my, my uh, it's so heavy. <laughs> okay, that's what it looks like. I don't think I can get that in focus. Anyway, there, oh, there it goes. I wish it would, but I'm trying to show you there, but it looks, there you go. So I, that's what it looks like. Sorry, that's blurry. Okay. So, and then I've got the, the, on the left, right, I've got the short one, okay, and on the right, I've got all my yarn, okay, and now we're going to go all the way to, let's see, how do we do this? I almost forgot myself. 
we want to go right here, I believe. But before I do that and, and make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think this is right. Boy, I hope so. <laughs> uh, so we want to um, take this yarn on the other side through that one. Pull it to the front. So now it's on the front, okay? We're not going to go to the front. But, um, wait a minute. Actually, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Uh, just stay on the back, okay? And then... We're going to do that same thing. We're going to go like this and then go through through here from the front to the back through that loop right there okay pull all your yarn through okay and then find the middle try to find the middle of uh, that's the middle. And now we're going to go and make the other part. And that starts by going through here, through to the front, okay? We want to go take all our yarn to the front. But you want to hold a little bit like that. Take the rest to the front, okay? And now you've got this loop. Okay, take your yarn right here and put it through the loop, but hold this part tight from where this started, okay, where this starts. Hold that tight, hold that tension, because we want to hold that tension now. Take this yarn, put it through that loop that we made, okay? Pull it through. Okay. So this is what this looks like on this side. I'm trying to pull it out so you can see, see the, the loops a little bigger. On this side, I went... Let's see. Oh, boy. There's so much yarn everywhere. Uh... So I went to the front, through this part. I went through there, out the other side, and through this loop that was created. And then here I am right here. And I'm holding this part right here until I get this part right there. Okay? And there we go. We've made our second one. There's our first one. There's our second one. Okay? That's what it looks like. And now we want to move on. And you can let go of it now because this will hold. It won't let go, which is nice because you don't have to keep holding the tension, which is really good and it's useful, which makes this hard and easy at the same time. Now we're going here. Okay? Basically, we're following this stick, we're going with it, uh, parallel. So think of it like that, okay? Okay, we're on the back. So now we, I'm on the back. Just go like that, find the middle, and then go through, through this pulling it towards you, okay? And remember, we don't have to worry about the tension right this second. So now we're on this side. You see that? Okay. All right, I'm going to split these lessons up. Cause, okay, here I come. I will be right back. Okay. 
So all we are is right here. Okay, so doing the same thing we did last time. We're going to go through to the front. Just put your finger there. Okay, and go through to the front, through this hole. Taking all our yarn through to the front. I'll show you what I did. So now I'm through, I went through here to the front of the mandala. All right, and I've got this little loop here. Okay. See that loop? All right. I want to go through that loop. Take the yarn that we have right here and go through the loop. There you go. Now, without losing that tension, pull that tight. You see? There's the next one. There you can see it. Sorry, my camera does not want to focus on it. That was the whole intention of buying this camera. <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys understand what you're looking at. Okay. Now we're going to the next one. Right here. Okay, we're forming, basically we're forming a star. This is where it's going to come back and meet up. Okay, but we're going all the way around. Here's this stick. Following that one. Okay. Or you can say one, two, or let's see. Um, well, we were right here, so we go one, two, three, four, and then it's always the fifth, okay? When you're working with 12 sides. Um, all right, again, to the front. Okay. Find the middle. Okay. Now bring it over to this side. Hold it with your hand right there. Go through to the front. Make sure you have a little bit of a loop right here. I usually hold it like this with my thumb. Like my thumb holds a little tiny bit up a little bit go through with the rest of your yarn to the front. So now I'm through to the front. I went through this, then I grab this yarn and go through that loop on the top. Pull my yarn through that. Oh! My goodness. Pull my yarn through that. <sighs> Gotta watch hitting my camera. Alright, and then now find the beginning of this. Pinch it right there. Grab this and pull it until it meets up. Okay? There's your next one. Okay? Let's see if I can get these focused so you can see it. Oof, almost. There you go. That's what it looks like, okay? There you go. That's what I'm making. The loop is in the back where it wraps around. I want that side to be in the back, okay? The front won't look like that. It won't have the little loop. Okay, next one. All right, I'm going to stop this and start a new video. Okay, here we are. Picking right up where we left off, okay? Same thing. 
we're on the, the back. We just go through to the front, through this side, okay? Pull this all out. Okay, now take this, find the middle, slide it to the middle. Right there looks good. Okay, now pinch it with your finger, what you're working with. Take this hand, pinch it. Pinch a little bit more than you than you need, okay? like. Pinch a big area, like don't just pinch a little, don't just pinch a little bit, pinch a lot. Like go like, don't just pinch a little bit, go like this. Okay? Take this, go through, go through, right, go through here, going through that spot right there. Okay? Pull all your yarn through. We're going to the front. Okay, and now this is why we leave this little loop in the top right here. Okay, I'm holding it like that so we have this loop to work with. So there's a little bit to go through. You see what I'm saying? So we want to take the yarn from the back, from the front that we have in the front now, go around and through that loop over our little black line that we made and through this loop trying to get it to go through and then take okay so now I'm through the loop okay and now I'm just gonna pull this tight I can let go right about there and just slide it over there until it's tight okay and then now you can let go because it's kind of like a knot there is, that's what it looks like. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. There you go. So that's what it looks like. And that's what they look like. See how it's got the little, it's got the little loop holding it together? That's only on the back side. On the front, it looks like this. Let me see if I can show you. It's important. Here's how it looks on the front. It's different. Um, let me see if I can get that in, in focus. There. See, it's there is no loop in the front. It's hidden behind the strings. Now that's what we want, okay? All right. I really wanted to show you that. I'm glad it decided to focus for that. Next one. Okay, right here, following the contour of, or the, the going parallel with this stick and just doing the same thing we've been doing, okay? Pulling it to the front. Okay, find your middle that you're... Okay, now find the middle. That looks like the middle. That looks good. Take your fingers, pinch it, go through, through there. Okay. Take all of your yarn and go through there while you're still pinching all the stuff that you're that's already there. Okay, now you got this loop. You want to go over the black yarn and to the, to the back again, and then go through that loop. And then carefully taking that loop and making it smaller and smaller until it's met up with the other side, okay? And there you go, there's your next one. Okay, so do that all the way till you get back to the beginning okay so we're gonna we're gonna just do all this first one together we're not gonna skip any parts for this 
So here we go. Here's the next one. I'm just going to do this now. And hopefully I have enough string for this. I don't. Wow. One, two, I think I do. Boy, I hope so. I might not have brought, I might not have gotten enough, but we'll see. All right, so moving right along. Okay, next. <coughs> Find the middle, pinch it, go through, go through the loop. Take it, hold it tight still, and then meet it to the middle quickly so it doesn't lose tension right here okay and that one was a little off so I had to recenter it but even after you do it you can move these around okay you can adjust them which is nice that's the nice part it's a hard design to get but once you figure this out you'll love it you can do all kinds of stuff with this um, I have a feeling I, I'm, I've shorted myself on the yarn I might have to put a little knot in the back and add more yarn <laughs> don't want to do that but just for this tutorial's sake anyway moving along same thing going through going through this and then going through the loop to the back again holding the tension and then making that little loop small until it meets up with the other side Okay, and there we go, going this way. Yeah, I have a feeling that I'm not going to have enough yarn. That's unfortunate, but we'll see. I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm really short here. We'll figure that out when the time comes. All right, so through here. And then through the loop. Holding the tension, pulling it until it's small. There you go. And I have, do I have enough? Oh my goodness, I might, oh no. Well, no, I don't know. We'll see. I think I don't, but we'll see. That would be funny if I have just enough, but I think I have a little, sh I'm too short by just a couple inches, which is really terrible. Um, but we'll see. We're, we're almost there. So once we're there, though, that's okay. So holding the tension and then getting the loop in the middle. Find, make sure it's in the middle each time. Slide it over if you need to. Yeah, here's how much I have left. Okay, and I still need to go all the way back to the beginning. So let's see what's going to happen here. I don't think I have enough yarn, but we'll see. I might. Oh my goodness, I have just enough yarn. How funny is that? That was, that's a miracle. Um, we're almost there. When we get there, that's when I'm going to explain more. Um, but we're almost there. Okay, and then pulling that tight. Look at that. Look at, look at that. I'm sorry, but Actually, I might not have enough, but what I'll do, since I can just let go of this, okay, is I'll just tie some yarn to this and make it longer for me to work with, but it will end up getting cut off where I'm going to tie. So that's good. So, um, but do I actually need to do that? Well, I don't think I need to do that. I think I'll just try and do it with this short piece because it is going to get a little tighter. So we're back to the beginning. This is the exciting part. It's kind of difficult. I forgot that I can do that. But I didn't want to hit the camera. Here we go. 
we're taking out this part can just kind of sit here okay that we met up with all right where we left off just now this part can just kind of sit there all right all right for now anyway it's not going anywhere where it's fine this part we need to pull out we need to pull this out get this out of here just this side just the left side this side we're going to keep okay but we need to hold the tension while we hold this okay and then we're going to tie them together right here okay and that'll be the first string <laughs> and we have to do that with every string that I put on here so you repeat this procedure it's uh, very tedious but uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing here we go all right, here's the string that I have that's just hanging out, okay? And I got to hang over the table a little bit. And I hope my face doesn't get in the camera while I'm doing this, but I'm trying to really focus on what I'm doing here. But you can pull this out and lose the tension, that's okay. Because again, it's the tension's being held where it meets up right here. It's it's not going anywhere. But you want to make sure that when you do this part that Anyway, you want to make sure that it, the tension is, is there. Okay, look, you want to leave leave it where you have it. Okay, we're going to take this part, find the middle, right about there, and then pull this until this black part is the same as the rest. Okay, and then hold this here like that. Take this end, go under and back over again like that you see what I got what I got there and then now we're gonna tie these together but put them together squeeze them together okay and this is where you just want to make sure that when you pull these and tie them together that you don't lose the tension of this black string okay so just keep that in mind while you do this. And what I do is I make a square knot. Then I go on the left, I go over and through. Pull that tight. There's the knot. Okay. And now I'm going to go take the left one again and go under and then through. And pull that tight okay and then take this and snip them short like that just a little bit leave a little bit there okay definitely want to leave some yarn there don't snip it too short or else it'll come loose but if you did a square knot it's so tight that I I don't think it'll come loose. I, this is the way I do it. Um, so if there's any other better ways in the future that you see, go for it. But this is the way I secure it. Um, that's how you can get it to go all the way across and it doesn't have any knots anywhere through here. It's just hidden along these areas right here. And now the next time, excuse me, the next time when I start the next color, I'm going to do it right here on a different spot, not where I have this knot. So when I come back to the beginning, there's going to be a knot here or do it somewhere randomly. Okay, and that way you don't have all your knots on the same spot unless you want that. I mean, that might be a good thing um, to have just all your knots, you know, in the same on the same point so there aren't our bunch of knots everywhere but I try to spread them out and that kind of hides them more in my eyes that's what I think all right so we're gonna do the next one together and then after that I'm gonna leave you guys on your own to do the rest however many you want to do um, I'm probably gonna do one color and then I'm gonna switch to the next color so my next color was a green all right, it's bright green, and this is the color I'm going to do next, and I'm going to lay it along there, and it's going to go like this, okay? 
And I'm going to just change colors every one color. I'm not going to do two of each this time. Okay? And it's going to go this way and this way. And so it's going to be about this big when I'm finished. And there's going to be about six colors. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six here. So it'll be like a total of 12. Okay? And it'll be about like that long. And it'll be a point. And from here, of course, that's what you'll get. Okay? And it will just, what this is going to do is, of course, this will bloom out the green that we did in the middle. And now we get that green back because I did so much blue and purple, uh, blue and pink uh, that I don't want to, uh, I want the green to be the theme here because the green was what I started with. Okay, so now I'm going to end the mandala with the green as well. Okay, that's my intention anyway. And so we're putting more green right now. And that's what we're doing. Okay, so far it looks good. And I hope that everyone got that. That was probably one of the hardest tutorials I've ever done so far. Because it's just difficult because I, I, I feel like it's really... Uh, people are missing details that they need to see that are very critical. I hope that you guys caught everything you needed to see for that. Um, I hope so. Okay, see this one right here? I'm looking at it. This one's all over to the left, so that's no problem. Just slide it over until it's in the middle. Do that now before you start your next color, okay? Make sure all of these are in the middle. Okay, uh, that because the next color, once you put that one on, you won't have a chance to slide anything around. <laughs> It'll be right where you put it. But right now you have the opportunity to get everything where you want it to be. And we should do that. We should go around and make sure. Because these mandalas take forever. And they're hard. And we should put dedicate the time to them that is necessary since we put so much work into it. Um, there we go. In the middle. Everywhere we go here. That one looks good. That one looks good. Here's the one where we tied it. You won't see those little parts. Those will kind of disappear, I promise. But um, for now, that's what it looks like. And there we go. That looks good. Everything's in the middle now, I think. Everything looks pretty good. Just get it as in the middle as possible, okay? So there, that's beautiful right now. Okay, so the next step is putting the next color on. And I'm going to do that next, and that's going to be a new video. And here we go. All right. We're back. I'm going to start with the green yarn. And all right. So I'm not going to do it where I, uh, you know, where, like I said, I'm not going to start there. I'm not that daring. Um, I'm going to start in a different place. In fact, I'm going to pick a spot that's not so close to that at all. How about right here? Okay. Just a random position. Doing the same thing, okay? We're going to, um, what did I do? I put it in the, uh, boy, I can't even remember. Um, underneath, okay? And then take both parts. The thing is, when you make that loop, when you make that loop, have your left side the one that's short, okay? Make it long enough that it's like that long. There's your loop. Put it underneath. And then take everything that you have in your hand. Okay. Take your loop. Take everything that's in your hand and put it through the loop. All of it. So the short end is now... See what I did there? Here's the short. Now pull this. I have a lot here. Whoop! I have a lot here. Last time I, I was afraid I didn't have enough, so I, I don't remember how much to use, and I, I don't know. I got a lot of yarn there. That's okay. All right. 
Now you'll see that it's on one side right now. That's okay. So we're going to take, all right, so actually we just want this yarn to be free. Hold on a minute. Am I right? You can just leave that there like that. Okay? Leave it all like that. That's what you want. What we just did there with the loop like that, that's fine. Just leave it like that. All right. So now do what you would do on the other side. Just pretend like we are doing it correctly. Like what I mean by that is every uh, the step we did next, like pretend like this side was done just right. Right now that we're just attaching this, we're going to unattach it later. So this is something that you don't want to just make a simple knot because it's really hard to undo. That's why I like doing these complete knots like that where all you need to do is take like a, a yarn needle and take that loop that we made and pull it loose. And then you can get it loose real easy. Okay? But we're not doing that right now. So pull that tight. So there we go. There's that side. Now, do the same thing we did before. Hold it right here. Go through to the other side. Pull all of this yarn through. Take this loop. Go through it. Okay. Lots of yarn. Especially at the beginning, because it's the whole the whole length of it. So now, all we've done is that. Oh, sorry, my hair there. All we've made is this. Okay, that's what you want, right? When you pull that, now you've got it right here on this side. Hold that. Pull this tight. Okay. It's going to look funny on this one because we're going to undo this, but it's not going to look correct. It's going to look, uh, let's see, that's how it ends up looking. It's not, it, the, it's just kind of weird, like lopsided, like this side right here is, it's slanted downward. Don't worry about all that. <clears throat> we're going to take that out and we're going to fix all that later. This is just the starting point. Okay, so uh, same thing. Now we're going to go follow this, go over here. Okay. And then we're going to go and do it like we've been doing, okay? Now when you do this, don't pull it real tight right here because you don't want this part that you already did to come real loose. Just do it like where it feels like it's tight. You know, not super tight, just where it doesn't want to pull anymore, okay? Don't do it too tight. That's important because you don't want to make your previous uh, yarn to get slack in it. You don't want that. And that's how it, that happens. All right, this one's going to look good. So now we're going over this way, okay? And it's going to be... Hmm. Okay, so we're going over, and it's going to be under the yellow line that we made. And you'll see that up close when I show it to you. But just pinch the yarn, go through, under, under, through the hole again, just like we've been doing. Okay. And then take this loop that you have that you're holding on to and go through that with all your yarn. Go through it. Okay, pull all your yarn out. Lots of yarn. This is what hurts my shoulders. Oh boy, pulling like that. Okay, now pull it. Now hold it where it's the beginning of it is. Hold it there and then meet this up with it. But don't meet it up with the whole thing. Meet it up with the yellow. 
Okay, what I mean by that is you'll see in a minute. So there, I did that one. And now it's on the other side of the yellow, okay? And I'm going to hold that up close now so you guys can see that. <clears throat> Explain some things here. All right, this one, this side is a little loose. It's not pulled tight. But there you can see that that's how that looks now. Okay, so just imagine the right side pulled tight. And there, okay, I'm trying to get it in focus. It doesn't want to, does it? There you go, okay. So the green yarn that I put on there is below the little loop that I went around. It's below the yellow loop, below it, not above it. That's going to form a little triangle. It'll look like a little triangle when we're all done. Next. Okay. So now we're going just following the design we already made. Okay. You know, just following with that yellow line. And then we're going right here and then going through this little hole. Pulling the yarn out. Okay, now remember, don't pull it too tight. Just get it, you might even want to take it right here and just kind of get it tight, but not tight, tight right here, not too tight. And then get it below the last yellow line. Put it put where you're going to pull it below that. Hold it with your hand. Pinch it right there with holding a little above. Take all your yarn, put it through, and then pull it until it comes out the other side. And then take that loop that you have and then put the yarn that you have here through that loop. All right, pull your yarn through it. Okay, we're still holding this side nice and tight. Now get ready to, now you can take this and just pull it until it meets up with the other side, you know what I mean? Until it hits the yellow, okay? All right, and then just pull that and follow it. You can let it go because it's a knot. It won't move. That's the good part. Don't worry about holding the tension. All right, and just continue all the way. I'll do one more on camera, and then I'm going to let everyone do them on their own. Um, I'll explain that what basically I'm doing one color at a time. So you change, after you make the knot at the end, change colors and start the process over from how we started here, okay? Um, so I went through and I'm coming, holding it, pinching it, making the little loop, going through this part right here to the front, pulling all my yarn through. Okay, now taking this and going through the loop I have right here. finding the right part to pull. <laughs> Get all that yarn out of there through that loop and then hold your part right here that you're holding tight and now pull this and meet it up with the yellow. Kind of tug it back and forth like this to kind of yank it to get it to move. It'll help it kind of move. And there you go. Uh, there's your next one. So that's what it looks like. Come on, camera. Do your thing. You can do it. There you go. See? Okay, so the green is below the yellow. Whoop. For a second there it did it. But the green is below the green is below the yellow. Okay? And that's how that I'm doing this. The next color will go below the green. Okay, that line will lay below it. You'll just keep pushing the design upward. It'll push it upward as you lay the colors on there. 
okay? Each time you lay a new color, the little line that you lay will always lay right here. It won't keep building up this way. It'll just keep pushing this forward, and that's okay, okay? Well, let's continue. <clears throat> so... I'll do, let's, I lied. I'll do one more with you guys because I feel like it's, this is really hard and I want to make sure everyone understands. Oh, <laughs> as long as I don't destroy my camera. Um, and then after I'm done this, I'll just go ahead and finish this off on my own and we'll come back and we'll do the last part of this mandala and we'll finish it up. And that'll be it. So... See, if you pinch it like this and then go through here, there's nothing, there's no loop, okay? That's why I like to take this much of it and hold it like that above it. Just like I have like a, a section I'm holding, you see? Above everything. And that way you've got a loop started. So now I'm going through that hole again. It's always getting caught right there. Anyway, I'm going through through that space right there with the yarn to the front of the mandala. And then I'm taking the loop now that I have here. See, now I've got a loop. And now I'm going to take and go through that loop. And now I'm on the back of the mandala again. Okay. And I'm going to pull all the yarn through that loop that I have here. There's so much yarn, so it looks really crazy right here. But, um, wow, did I even do it? See, no, I didn't even, just went backwards. I didn't go through. Okay, I pulled the wrong piece of yarn. That happens. <laughs> there we go. So now, okay, and taking this part, pinching it and then getting it without losing as much slack as you can it, like keeping it as taut as possible as you pull it in to the yellow okay and then there you go and then you've got your next one okay it's that that easy <laughs> I don't know if it's easy though all right so that's it and then um I'm going to go ahead and finish this color, and then I'm going to finish the whole thing, and then we'll come back and we'll finish the last part of this mandala. Actually, what I'll do is, I just thought about it, what I'll do is I'll come back right when I come to the end of this one, and I'll show you guys how I tied that one off once more. So I'll be right back. Okay, <clears throat> I'm to the, to the end. And I wanted to guy. I wanted to show y'all um, how I wanted to show everyone how I uh, finished this off. So what we did in this time is we made this knot <clears throat> on the left. We're just going to take that out. Okay, we're going to take that completely out. That's why I want, last time I thought I was supposed to take it completely out, but only on the, the beginning you don't take it completely out. Right here now we want to take the second part out. And we just want the, the right side to be wrapped around the black. We don't want it to be wrapped around this side. So we're taking that out, okay? There we go. Taking it out, and now it's only wrapped on that side, okay? It's wrapped, and then it comes through here. And then now here it is, okay? And now you want to hold that. Well, you can let it go, but just make sure it's still there. Let, it, let that sit there like that. Okay. Now you have this side. You don't need whatever you have yarn you have left. Cut it to about here. You want about this much. Not too much. Just enough that you can use to tie it and get enough to hold it in your hand. Now we're going under it like we have been and then through and then out to the front to the back or on the back of the mandala. And here's my other part. I'm going to cut both of these now a little shorter. Just enough that I can hold them. All right. 
you see what I got here? So take that one. Take this one and get it over there. Now make sure they're they're pulled tight, but not you know too tight. Okay, because you don't want to affect the tension that we already have going with the uh, the, uh, the yellow yarn that we put on there before. So here we go again. Uh, this is the second one, and this is how you do it through the whole thing. Okay. The way that we started, <clears throat> excuse me, the way we started the second yarn right here is the way we're going to start the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. Okay, and this is the way we end them. So, um, all right, so take your right, take your left, whichever you choose, put it over, make a knot, simple, right? Pull it tight without losing that tension. Careful not to lose the tension. All right, and then hold that down while you do the next one. So now it's under with the left. And make a second knot. Sorry, I can't. This is a little off camera there, but get the idea. This one's a little off to the right or to the left, but that's okay, whatever. So I'm going to cut this one to like right there. Make them a little long, not too long, like that, okay? You want them to be a little long because you want to put the yarn that you did, that you put on next. You want these little ends to be, you want the yarn you put on next to go underneath that underneath these little things. So in the front you won't see this at all. Okay, so that's what I did. I tied it off. Can I get that on camera and focus? There. So it's kind of, it's tied a little weird to the left there, but it's gonna work, okay? No problem. And uh, that's how you do the whole thing, okay? That's the process, okay? So I hope everybody uh, uh, I hope people can grip what I just did there. Um, it is a little bit confusing on camera to watch that, and it's difficult to pick up the steps. Um, just keep trying. You can get it. If you have any questions, I'm always available. But um, that's how it looks in the front now. Okay. Uh, this one's, that one looks a little weird because it's got that thing that you see there. That'll, you won't see that. When you start adding new strings, that'll go away. That little bit that'll hide but as you can see um, yeah I mean you can't even find the one with the yellow that I tied see it's gone you can't see it I don't know where it's at myself <laughs> it's somewhere on here but I don't see it they all look normal okay and so that's how that's gonna look and then in the, the back we got this going on it looks crazy uh, but the front is kind of a little less busy. This is a busy mandala, but it's a pretty mandala. It's, it's uh, blooming. It looks very botanical with like semi-botanical colors. Um, but yeah, we're going to finish these and there. Um, I'm going to do green. To, uh, I'm just going down the spectrum of green. I'm going to use uh, the colors I did previously. So I'm using the next color is this green, and then this one, and then, wait, maybe not this one. It's one of these. This one right here. Okay, so. I'm going to finish doing those with these colors, and then, actually, this one too. So I'm going to put... One, two. I might put this one on here at the end, but I'm not sure. But anyway, this is the colors I'm putting on next. Just one, one of each. Okay? One color of each. Okay? We don't want it to be too big either. We're going to make these nice and pointy. They're going to look really pretty at the end. So I'm going to finish that, and then we'll be back for the next part. If 
I can turn this off. Okay, I've decided to... Okay, we so we finished this part right here, and there's eight different colors, and this is how it looks on the back. Okay, once we've got that done, okay, once we have this done, now you want to start, I'm, I'm starting with black, and I don't know how much I'm going to use, but we're going to see, we'll, I'll, we'll see how this looks and then go from there. So I'm starting with black and I'm going to go and just pick a spot anywhere to start. Okay. Go through here and then through the loop it's creating, All right? All right? And then same on the other side, but start from below, from the back to the front, okay? Go through the loop, through this loop, Pull it. Okay. Just creating that. Okay. I'm going to do that around the whole perimeter. just going around, I'm wrapping around once with this. I don't need to wrap around any more than that. So we're just going to wrap once. With that. Um, okay, again, going through, through the loop. Okay. <clears throat> Same on the other side, but this time from the back to the front. Okay. And went through through the loop. Sorry, I'm having trouble not having enough hands and enough room where I'm sitting. So I've got <laughs> got to improvise. Okay, so there's another one. Okay, that's all it is. Okay, now I'm going to go all the way around and do this until I get back to the beginning, and then I'm going to probably do it another time. But we'll see. Oh, my yarn is getting really knot it up. So I'm going through there, through the loop, and let's hope my yarn doesn't decide to knot up because I have a big section of it and when I have these really large sections they really get knotted up sometimes. Okay, that worked. So I'm just going to the next side, going through the loop through that part, and then through this loop. Yep, yeah, there is a knot there. Okay. There's another completed one, okay? We're going to go all the way around and do that. Okay. Right there. Okay. 
okay, going all the way around. I gotta move this towel. <clears throat> this this towel is getting in my way. It's making it harder for me to move the mandala on the table. Um, I hope you guys can still see what I'm doing. I know I'm using black right now. Um, in a minute, I will be switching to a bright color, and hopefully, that'll fix everything. <laughs> make it so you guys understand what I'm doing but I'm trying my best so if there's any problems people don't see what I'm doing please contact me and I will explain uh, just for you privately how to achieve this if you're having any difficulties I don't have any problem doing that anytime anyone has a question and it's regarding mandalas I'm there for you so just keep that in mind. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, these long strings can get really, they can get messy. It's hard to work with the long string that I'm working with. And I have a big knot in it, so I'm going to fix that. This is how I am able to free my hands and fix problems. I'm not cutting anything, I'm just making that like that so I can fix this problem right here. Where'd it go? Did I just fix it? Oh no. Here it is. I got a big knot in my yarn. There, see? Now we can move on. Okay. Going around the whole thing. Trying to do it in a place where you guys can see the background. Sorry for my face getting in the way there. Oh, man. There. So. Just making these all the way around. So, this is just something that takes some time. But well, yeah, once you get all the way across. We can start doing other things once we get this black done, but it just takes some time to do these things. So. Have patience with yourself. Even I need to practice that right now. So, it's always the one on the left, the little part where we always go through this way. And then on the return, when we come back around on the right, you always go this way. Okay? So we're going to go this way with that one. And then straight through the loop. And then pull it. Okay, and then 
down from the front to the back through the loop and then pull it. Okay, and then the same thing. Pinch it right there to keep the tension. Put your needle through the back to the front and then immediately through the loop. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, having trouble here. Usually I'll, uh, I'll use my teeth, but I don't want to get my face in the way of the camera. So I'm trying to do it so you guys can see everything. Uh, but it's, it's an awkward position for me right now to do this on camera. It's always hard for me to um, make the mandalas on camera. I don't know why. But forgive me for that. I'm trying my best to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing and convey what I'm trying to do in a, a manner that you guys can actually comprehend. Uh, anyway, next. Front, through the loop. Oops. And this black color, it's really difficult to see anyway. But uh, I'm going to be doing another color, the same thing here. And you'll be able to see it so much better. It's just that this calls for black right here. And I can't choose a different color right now. Back to front, through the loop. Okay, and then pull it. Normally I would be picking this up, holding it in my hand, and being able to show you guys exactly what I'm doing. It's just so heavy at this point that I can't even pick this up with my finger. It can. It's hard, though, to pick it up. It's very heavy. So this table is supporting all the weight. And uh, But, I mean, I do like how it turned out, um, how the how the, uh, the thin rods, how they look. It turned out pretty good, but I don't think I'm going to be using uh, metal rods of this weight anymore. It was just too, too hard for me. But I can see why people want to use them. Um, they are very sturdy, and they're very, they're very thin, which is an advantage for when you're stacking so many on top of each other. And, uh, but, uh, I, yeah, I'm going to be using wooden sticks from now on, I think. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll, I, I probably will, though, because this was really difficult for me to, uh, use this type of rod. I don't know why I chose this rod for this, but I did. Okay, almost there. And then from there, I'm probably going to do another one. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to do that off camera and just finish it. Um, and when we get there, we can pick back up. Here's the last one. It's from the back to the front. And then we're going to meet up with where we started. Okay, back to where we started. Okay.
Okay, now I'm going to do a couple more blacks going around, and then after that, um, I'll come back and we'll talk about how many we did and how many I decided to go with because I do like how the border is turning black right here and if I go further with that it may look really really good and I might just go do the whole thing black instead of green I was gonna finish it with green like use this green and put it here and I still might but Black is prevailing right now. <laughs> black, it, black is, it just seems to look really good right now. It's, I know you, it's hard for you to see that because, of course, I'm holding it against a black background. But uh, let me figure that out, and then I'll come right back. If the camera will turn off. Why well, it doesn't ever turn off? <laughs> okay, so as you can see here, um, I kind of like the black. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue doing the black. Uh, I have three on there. One, two, three. I'm thinking about doing another. Uh, another three um, and that will make a total of six right it'll make it six threads thick right here and I think that will make the border look really nice and then I might uh, do something after that but we'll see so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna do another three another three uh, rounds of the black okay so let's do that okay so here's what I've got I've decided to just do this much black like we've done I went around three times and now it's time to it's time to finish it with green um, I decided to use green and I hope I made the right decision ending this mandala in green. Um, I chose green because I started with green and now I'm gonna finish it with green. Um, it's kind of like telling a story and the events of the beginning of the story um, they meet into each other at the end forming a connection like a circle I don't know <laughs> anyway we're ending it in green and I hope that's right I hope hope it looks good with green um, I felt like it was gonna be too saturated because I've already used green here but we're gonna just try it and see what happens because I really can't think of any other color to use um, been having a lot of trouble trying to figure out what color to put on last and uh, this black that I used was the only thing I could think of and now that I'm done with the black because I just don't want to use any more of that I had to think of another color to use and I have three to pick from blue pink and green and like I said we're gonna use green because we started with it and I want to end it with that green so like I said I hope that's the right decision and we're gonna find out I'm gonna go around once with this yellow and show on camera how I'm going to continue doing this because the black was very hard to see so I'm going to start with this yellow you'll be able to see it a little easier it's the same technique that I used with the black um, but it's just much easier for you to see and I'm going to do that once and then I'm going to finish the rest on my own and we'll come back at the very end and uh, talk about what we've done so this part is get this part is the easiest um, well this is the end and this this procedure is much easier than doing what we did here this was pretty cha challenging if it's your first time it can be pretty tricky so 
We did it though. So again, we're going through here and through the loop that you create. Okay. Okay, that's where I left off, right there. Now, I'm going to go this way, okay, from the back to the front, and through the loop that you've created. And then same with this one. Go through the front and then through the loop. I hope my face isn't getting in the way the whole time. I just can't see what I'm doing. Okay, right there. Now through the from the bottom to the top, okay, and then through this loop right here, through here, right through that loop that you've made. Pull your yarn through. Oh, I need to get a different chair. This chair has the arms on it, and it, my yarn keeps getting caught on it, so that's not going to work. But anyway, that's what I want you guys to do. Let me grab another chair real quick. And I'll be right back. Just got to change chairs. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So... Okay. Just trying to get that in the right spot. There was some yarn in my way right there. Again, through the, the front to the back, straight through that loop that you make. Okay. I know it looks like I should be putting it right next to that pink right there, but there's actually these black lines, and this is where the, it ended. It's just hard to see because it's black. From the back to the front, through the loop. So it's always from the front to the back, and then when you return to the other side, it's from the back to the front. So you're always changing, re reversing, okay? This is how it's looking, okay? Now you guys can see what it is I'm doing because it's no longer black. Black is hard to see, especially against this table. I apologize for that. From the front to the back, through the loop, just going around mandala finding where we left off with the black right there be careful where you put this color make sure that you put it where you had your last uh, black put down you don't want to over uh, you don't want to go over it I almost did myself um, you want to make sure you're just laying it right next to it not on top of it it's hard to see it it's so dark can't really see it. Even even I can't see it from where I'm at. So it's difficult, especially in the light I have. It's in the evening here, and the light is dim, and my light bulbs aren't very good. Not for this, anyway. Okay. Through the front, to the back, through this loop. Okay. It's a big loop because all of your yarn is on the ground, Okay, but I just 
want to point out there is a loop there. It may not look like it. Okay, now from the back to the front through that loop. Making sure you find the right spot. Make sure when you when you pull this one that when you come over to here to this side that you pull this one to the same length as this one. Don't pull this one tighter. You want these to be as symmetrical as possible. And that can be achieved by the amount of tension that you pull on it. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, it's not always just about bending the sticks. It's about, you know, uh, achieving symmetry with your yarn as well, not just not just worrying about your sticks. Through the back to the front, through the loop. Oh, I hope I have enough yarn. I think I do. I'm not sure I uh, gave myself enough yarn to go all the way around. I think I did. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Front to back, through the loop. Okay. Back to front, through the loop. Front to back, through the loop. Back to front, through the loop. Patience with yourself during these. It takes a very long time to go even once all the way across, especially as you get to the outer portion. It just seems like it takes even longer. But um, with 12 points as opposed to 8 points, there are more, there's going to be more to do, and but they always look much more interesting, well, not always, but um, the more points, sometimes the more, the more is going on with the mandala, not always though, but I prefer my my favorite mandalas to make are definitely the 12 point mandalas like this they're my favorite to make uh 12 points is just very pleasing to me but um everybody's different everybody likes something different but yeah 12 pointed mandalas are my favorite I like working with hexagons. I like the hexagonal stars. I'm a big fan of those shapes. They look very nice to me. There's more possibilities <clears throat> with a 12-point mandala than there is with an 8-point. Again, not always, <laughs> generally speaking. Okay, now we're almost to the other side. We're almost to the beginning where we started. And that's when I'm going to change colors. And then we're just going to continue doing the same thing until we get to the end of this green. <clears throat> I'm starting with the brightest color of the green. And then I'm going down to the darkest. Um, when I finish that, then this mandala should be considered completed. 
um, but we will <laughs> we'll see. I will judge that when I get there. And I will know more then. Um, it, I like the way it looks. Um, it's a little intense for me, though, the, my color choices. Um, uh, just this last part I'm speaking about. Um, we'll, we'll see how, I'm not quite sure how it's going to look. I have a very, I have a really hard time predicting what it's going to look like in my head. I can't visualize that. Um, so we will figure that out together. So there, we're back to the beginning. And then I'm going to finish that color by just wrapping, I'm going to, uh, tie it off. Okay. <laughs> and once we do that, we just change colors to the next green, which was a very bright green. This is a yellow. So the next color I have is a very bright green. Okay. And then I'm going to put that right here next to the yellow. All right. So that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to start a new color anywhere you want and then do this same technique. Okay, just following it right next to the yellow. We're going to lay this down, wrap it right here like we did right next to that, and just keep building it up until we get to the very darkest green, which is, for me, this one. Okay? So I'm doing one strand per, I'm going around once, I think, actually, let me look at this. Boy, I'm confused about that. Yeah, I'm just going to go around once and see how that goes. So once around with the, each color, okay? All right, and then we'll come back when we finish. I just wanted to say that I changed my mind, but I wanted to leave that part of the tutorial on there with the yellow uh, because uh, that way you could see what I'm doing. But what I did is I changed my mind and I started with a green. Okay. I started with the darkest green. I think that's the darkest green. I hope it is. And it's fine if it isn't. And, um, and then from there, we're going to, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm ah, thinking to myself, not out loud. Okay, so this is the first color we did. It's dark, dark green, okay? And then I'm just going to go up the spectrum now, okay? And then we're going to go from there, okay? So now I'm going to start putting the next color on, which is a little brighter than that last one. Just a little bit, and you can see that right here. Okay, and then I'm going to go up. But the yellow explains how I did it, okay, and it was easy to see it. Okay, so, but um, I will get to yellow, but that'll be around here. Okay, so I'm going to start doing that, and then we'll come back and we'll discuss it. All right, we're here to discuss the result of the mandala. Um, let's see, I'm just trying to find a good place to put the camera. All right. Here's what we got. Okay, so what we're looking at is the result of the mandala being finished. And you can see what it is we just worked on up close now. I wanted to get that in. There you go. All right, so we started with black. I did three black. And then I did started with the darkest green and did one color, one green. Uh, <laughs> I did one color, and then I switched to the next color. Um, so uh, it's a dark green to a light green, and then it went to that from a, a violet at the end. So, and uh, 
I thought it turned out really nice. Um, but yeah, so this is the end result. Um, a couple things that um, that I want to change the next time I do a mandala like this. I probably won't be using metal rods. Um, as you can see, there's still quite a lot of rod left on each one. Some are longer than others. If you look, some are longer. Like uh, yeah. This one right here is really long. This one's really short. I wanted to cut this, and I went to start cutting them, and I had problems with that. I actually started ripping the yarn. Um, I actually had to restring the last purple, uh, the violet, uh, because it actually ripped. Uh, so I'm hesitant to try to do that again. I'm just going to leave these on there like that and just deal with it. <laughs> I'll live with it. But um, I do like the way it turned out, and I hope you guys did too. And uh, and I hope to see uh, some of the, uh, the designs that you guys come up with soon. I'll really enjoy that. So I hope we uh, were able to learn from my tutorials. My tutorials are not the best. I apologize. I'm not... I'm not very good at using the camera, <clears throat> but um, here's the back. Whoa, I want to show the back. So th there's the back, okay? You can see that when we did these right here, uh, these, oh, where am I? Right here, that's a tie, and that's where I tied one of the strings. And it's kind of messy, um, but that's how I do it. Um, I don't know if there's a better way. There probably is. But anyway, that's what we did. So, here's the back. Okay? And here's the front. Okay? So, anyway, I just wanted to discuss this real quick, the final design, and show you both sides and talk about that little problem I had with the rods. But um, overall, I'm very satisfied with this, and I hope you guys are too. And I can't wait to see you guys do this too. All right, so have a wonderful day, and I love you all. Take care.